What's going on guys? This is Empty Box and today we're going to finally get into the driving aspect of the series. But we're going to start with something that is completely overlooked way too much in the sim racing community. And this is actually one of the most important things you can do. This is something that will make you faster. It will make you more consistent regardless if you're a noob or a pro. Having a proper field of view or FOV is one of the most important things you can do in any sim. Every sim supports this feature, uh, or I should say every sim within the last 15 years supports this feature. So this is something that you should be doing and you should take the steps to ensure that you are using a proper FO. Now one of the biggest downsides to a proper field of view is if you have a single screen setup, it's going to look like you're driving slow because quote unquote sense of speed. But your sense of speed is just that. It's created by your peripheral vision. It doesn't actually happen. There is no motion blur in the real world or anything like that. What your field of view should replicate is what you would see sitting in the car with the size of your monitor basically as the window, if that makes any sense. This picture that you see in the background should make that a little bit clearer for you. The box is essentially your window to the world. As the box gets smaller, your field of view is decreasing. As the box gets larger, your field of view is increasing. But your field of view should replicate what you actually see in the real world. And there is a mathematical calculation for this, which you can find down in the description down below. And alternatively, within the iRacing sim, if you are a member over there. This is something that, by the way, you should bug every sim racing developer out there for because it should be something that is in with every sim on the market. It is that important. You might be wondering why you need a field of view calculator, especially if you're familiar with FPS games where usually you just crank it up to 80 or 90 or whatever you feel comfortable with. But there is only one mathematically correct answer to the field of view. Now this is something that there is a little bit of fudge room for for preference. However, you should try and stick as close as possible to that correct field of view. This will make sure that everything is as you naturally see it. The dashboard looks the size that it would look like if you're actually sitting in the car. The distance looks like the distance it should, accounting for the fact that monitors have a much lower resolution than your eyeball does. Everything should look natural, and this will allow you to become more immersed. It will make the car feel more in control. It will make you faster. It will make you more consistent. It will make everything easier, and it is definitely worth sticking through the initial stage of feels like I'm going so slow because it is an improvement. It is that big of a deal. Now what you're seeing in the background is a couple of screenshots that illustrate the field of view within iRacing.com, and it same applies to any other sim. It's not just iRacing. Uh, here in this particular example, we're looking at the Dallara IndyCar at Daytona Road Course, which I'll show some laps of with different field of views here in a moment. What you can see is the fact that everything should be the correct size. This is going to change depending on your setup. This is why there are field of view calculators out there. If I move my monitor closer, I can run a higher field of view. If you think about glasses uh, or alternatively perhaps more fitting, a helmet mounted display such as the Oculus Rift, it's a really small screen, but it's really, really close to your face, so you get a huge field of view. If you have, you know, a 30-inch TV 16 feet away, you're going to have a really small window to the world. So that's why you want to try and get your monitor as close as you possibly can, as comfortably as you can. Don't go blind in the process. That way you can get a larger field of view. Why do you want a large field of view? Because that way you get more information on screen and at the same time it is still correct to how it should actually look. This will mean you'll have more peripheral vision, you'll be able to see more of the track, you're going to be able to see your mirrors maybe perhaps. It's important to get as large of a field of view as you possibly can while still maintaining the correct field of view. That said, there are a couple of exceptions and a couple of things that you probably will need to consider and that is comfort. Using a low field of view like you'll have to use on a single monitor is very uncomfortable. You can't really see around you. So what is common is people will bump it up a little bit uh, to try and compensate for that. Give you a little bit more peripheral vision but at the same time still keep it accurate. Personally I believe you should go no more than 10 degrees more than what your actual correct field of view is because if you do start going too terribly much you'll start to lose all depth perception that you naturally would have anyways. 
This is something that would change depending on the car you're driving. Uh, for example, in an open wheel car myself, I prefer a little bit of a larger field of view here on my single monitor setup. In a closed cockpit GT car, not really a big deal because you probably won't be able to see out anyways. It's just kind of how you feel, how you decide you need it. That said, again, I cannot stress this enough, keeping as close to possible as you can to that 100% factually, mathematically correct field of view is important. The closer you can get it, the closer you can put up with, and it will be a learning experience if you're not used to it, the better it will be as an end result. Like I said, you will be faster, you'll be more consistent, you'll be more in control, which ideally is something that everybody wants to be. That said, what you're seeing on screen now is a couple of laps from Daytona Road Course in the Delora IndyCar over at iRacing. And look at the difference in the field of views. This is what I want to really stress with this video and why I did both the pictures as well as the videos. Just notice how much faster it looks like I'm going into the brake zones. That's less control. That's less car placement. You know, if you look at turn one here at Daytona on the road course, it's scary at a high field of view because everything's just moving by so fast and you have a really narrow window to actually hit here. But once you actually get the correct field of view and see things as you properly should be, the car is much more placeable, much more controllable, much less scary, much more in control, which will make you faster. It will make you safer. It is that big of a deal. And I mean it. Again, use the mathematical correct field of view for your setup and you will definitely be profiting.